Insulin, as used for bodybuilding. It's true that insulin has been used for decades for performance enhancement and bodybuilding. This video is strictly for educational purposes. All my disclaimers are fully enforced. And I ask that people share this video with anyone that's considering using insulin for performance enhancement. And please share this with any medical professionals that you know. It's amazing that medical professionals do not know about this. We have to educate them. The history of insulin goes all the way back to the 1920s where because of type 1 diabetes and people suffering, we understood as scientists that we could extract animal pancreatic enzymes and use that to cure people with diabetes. So, 1923, Nobel Prize was won by two Canadians, Dr. Fred Banting and physiologist Dr. J.J. McLeod. These experts, in addition to other experts, developed processes for extracting animal pancreatic extracts from dogs, cows, and pigs to cure people with diabetes. So from the beginning of insulin in the 1920s up until 1974, we were using all animal extracts only. And there were impurities with this, as you can imagine. And depending on how pure the extract was, people would have different degrees of reactions. So 1974, technology advances to a chromatographic process of purification, which significantly minimizes the impurities from extraction of animal pancreatic extracts. Incredible movement in science. And from 1970s now into 1978, where Gentech comes up with a incredible procedure called recombinant DNA procedure using modified E. coli bacteria, where they're producing biosynthetic human insulin and human insulin analogs. This technology now does away with any need for extracting pancreatic hormones out of any animals. Now we're making this completely in a lab and it's very pure. There's no impurities and we can even modify the amino acids to get different type of insulins, short acting, intermediate, long acting. This is incredible science. Now from 1978 with this new recombinant technology, which is the same technology is used for growth hormone, Till today, this is how we produce the world's insulin. Medical uses for insulin is diabetes. Diabetes type one, where someone has complete absence and loss of their endogenous production of insulin. And more commonly, diabetes type two, where someone is getting older, they're getting heavier typically, and metabolically, they are losing their endogenous insulin's ability to function. So impaired fasting glucose state is moving, developing into frank type two diabetes. This is where we see utility medically of insulin in the medical world. 55 million people are using insulin products for diabetes. There's another use of insulin, it's in the hospital and it's for hyperkalemia. So when the potassium levels are dangerously high, we can lower them through various techniques. And this is one of the techniques. You can use insulin, of course, with dextrose combined. We watch and monitor patients closely. We can lower significantly and rapidly serum levels of potassium. We can lower them. Um, so a lot of people don't know that. So that's another utility of insulin medically. I'd like to compare insulin to as a PED to anabolic angiogenic steroids. It's amazing that insulin is such a limited use medically where it's diabetes and hyperkalemia, but anabolic steroids as a PED, well, has many other uses medically. 
It has uses for hormone replacement, testosterone replacement for men, muscle wasting, general muscle wasting and rehabilitation after surgeries, chronic medical issues. And then we have severe cachectic states, burns, we use anabolic steroids, and of course, AIDS cachexia. So I like to bring that as a comparison that insulin is, is medically is so specific. It doesn't have any other outside uses. Unlike other steroids, they have, they're more generally used medically. The mechanism of action of insulin and how it's used. It affects skeletal muscle and it affects fat. In the skeletal muscle, it is anabolic. It will increase glucose uptake and free amino acid uptake and increase protein synthesis directly. Now, this is apart from the angine receptor stimulation by, say, steroids. So you could see how it's synergistic. Now, in the fat tissue, it increases free fatty acid uptake too in visceral fat and peripheral fat. It's interesting that we will see those side effects of this big gut syndrome that we see, and that's definitely inherent to insulin use. And we'll see other agents, polypharmacy. Lipodystrophy is a medical term for insulin using diabetics when they're injecting insulin subcutaneously, right around the injection site subcutaneously, they get these small little fatty uh, developed hard areas of where it's actually fat, and they need to move uh, the, the site around so they don't get that because in that site, when they're injecting it, they develop lipodystrophy. It's actually going to change the absorption and circulation into the body from that. So that's called lipodystrophy, and that would be uh, an example of peripheral fat uptake. Continuing with fat and the effects of insulin on fat beyond visceral fat. There's no question that insulin is going to affect every organ to some degree. Some of this is academic. We're going to see it in liver. We're going to see in the end my discussion with some examples of some steroid users that have died using some of this, these drugs altogether. It'll affect the liver, and we don't know. There's a condition called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. We'll see that more in the end. Heart, other organs, and with polypharmacy, it's very concerning. Now, how it's used with bodybuilders. Bodybuilders use it for performance enhancing. They use different types of insulin. There's short acting, there's immediate, and there's long acting insulins. Most bodybuilders learn that they're using short acting insulins and they're gonna do it mainly post-workout. They're gonna be very careful, obviously, with making sure they take enough carbohydrates with it. They will also use intermediate acting regular insulins anytime during the day, even at night, which is very, very dangerous. And we'll see why in a minute. The risks of insulin, the medical risks of insulin, the risks that I know about insulin, the risk that any man or woman that's an expert in performance enhancing drugs is not going to disagree with me. No one's going to disagree. We're going to start from one and we're going to go right down to the end to some aspects that they've not considered. And that's why I do these videos. Number one is hypoglycemia. There's no question. And let's talk about hypoglycemia. Insulin is a hormone that when it's injected into the body or it's liberated from endogenous sites in the body, it takes sugar in the blood and it shuttles it out of the blood. Now, the central nervous system brain doesn't need insulin to derive sugar. It derives it directly from the, the blood. Now, how is that relevant? So when you inject insulin, say for an example in the hospital setting, one of the top risks in hospital settings all throughout the world is dangers of hypoglycemia with patients that require insulin. And I could tell you that. So when we look for, and that's a controlled setting, we look for outside the hospital in the performance enhancing application. People try to understand the utility of insulin with a 
ratio of X amount of insulin units to carbohydrates, okay? And I'm not going to say what that ratio is. You could do the research on this. It's pretty straightforward. The advice always in the beginning is going to be disregard the ratios, disregard the kilogram per units, disregard any calculation, and just take a small amount and see how you feel. What can go wrong with this? You can calculate wrong. You can have other issues with metabolism, training, other drugs you're taking. It can interact poorly with you. There's stacking effects that we see inside the hospital and, and real diabetics where you're taking this drug with not just the same short acting or intermediate acting insulins, but maybe other types of insulins and it stacks. You're trying to calculate and to correct for how much insulin you're giving with carbohydrates, but your correction is wrong because you can't control what's happening. This is very dangerous. And this is common. Every person that I've interviewed is a patient who's come in who's used insulin, which many do, of course, and more are using, will tell me that there's going to be a point where they're going to use insulin. They're going to, have, they're going to feel squirrely. There's going to be a period where they'll get dizzy and they're going to feel these hypoglycemic effects. I've had experiences of patients telling me that they've crashed cars. They've ended up with panic attacks in the ER. Um, They've, one man stopped his car to pull over and was tearing his car apart to try to find any scrap of food to ingest because he couldn't drive anymore and he didn't know what to do. He ended up calling 911 and paramedics came and he was okay. A big warning is on this. Most of insulins that are prescribed in America, not to mention the world, are given at a standard 100 units per milliliter. There are concentrated forms of insulin, 500 IUs per mil. If you're using the standard 100 IUs per mil, and that's what you use, these are the problems are, folks. These are the problems. But you don't read or you don't see or you're not paying attention or it's not labeled properly because it's underground. You take something that's five times more powerful that's going to be a problem. You're going to have a problem. Next, people use regular insulin and intermediate acting insulins, and then they use it at night and they go to sleep. There's no question that people have died from this. In the strongman community, we know a man many years ago that was using insulin and performance enhancing drugs, and he had sleep apnea probably, he had some coronary disease, and he injected insulin and he went to sleep and he didn't wake up. So, please be careful. Risks continued in the fat accumulation in the visceral fat. This is really interesting. Now, these are those bellies you see. Is it an insulin gut? Is it a GH gut? Okay, let's talk about this. So, insulin is going to increase visceral fat accumulation. There's no question. In the medical world, for type 2 diabetics... We use insulin as a last resort. And thank you to the medical expert that brought that to my attention. We, because when we use insulin for a type 2 diabetic, they're going to gain weight. They're going to gain weight. But their A1C is going to drop and their glucose is going to be better controlled. It's a risk-benefit relationship. Not used when you're a diabetic and you're taking insulin, growth hormone, and tons of calories. This is why you see those bellies, of course, in the bodies. Now, that's what it is. It's not the belts. It's not that the muscles grow so much, but it's part of that. It's not training. It's insulin, growth hormone, and calories. Up to 10,000 calories a day and up to 100 units of insulin being used a day, maybe even more. Next, organomegaly. Okay, we know about the muscle. We know about the fat, visceral fat, peripheral fat. Now we talk about organs. Dallas McCarver. We have to use him as an example, although it's an extreme example, and thank God we don't see it commonly. I hope we never do. We see that organs can grow. This is an anabolic agent. Heart can grow. Liver can grow. His liver was huge. His heart was huge. His lungs were huge. 
This is polypharmacy. Again, insulin, growth hormone, calories. In the liver, we do see that it, it can grow. I've seen this in other reports that men that otherwise have no metabolic issues by using insulin, we see non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, I see this in case reports. This is academic at this point. Next, electrolyte disturbances. Remember, we use insulin in the hospital for hyperkalemia. It will lower very aggressively and rapidly the potassium levels. That can lead to death and that can lead to cardiac arrest. Imagine the potassium levels on the stage day or the day when these people are using insulins. It would be very interesting. So when you're having hypoglycemic effects, you could be also having hypokalemic effects. Those could be dangerous. Please be careful. Risks continued, insulin resistance, this we don't know and this is more academic. It, it appears that it's not happening, but we don't know. You use insulin for years and years and years and then maybe when you're older and you have propensity to be a diabetic, is it gonna be accelerated? Is it gonna be worsened? We just don't know, insulin resistance. Next, anti-insulin antibodies. This is very academic. So we know in the academic world with even human grade insulins, people develop antibodies to that. We don't know the reactions. We don't know what happens with that. We don't know about how it affects the skeletal muscle and you could have neurologic effects in life, the cardiac tissue, and can you be early set up for atrial fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia and sudden cardiac death? We don't know. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction in the world. Please be careful. CNS effects in the brain. Now, I can tell you this. I have seen patients that are type 1 diabetic. I've cared for them as a primary care doctor years ago. And one man would control his sugar so tightly that he would live almost hypoglycemically. And he has been uptunded many, many times where the paramedics had to come, which thank God there was always some around, and they would have to rescue him. And he tells me that this caused some permanent brain damage and personality changes on him. So again, this is extreme where it's a person using insulin for diabetes type one, and he's having multiple and repeat and consistent over years hypoglycemic effects, and it affected his central nervous system. We don't know. I close my presentation with this today. Insulin is certainly not like any other anabolic angenic steroid. It's a medical utility, and I'm very concerned for the use of insulin in the world for anyone. I don't care if it's a newbie where the mature guys are criticizing your newbie, you don't need it, and it's okay for the extreme professional, advanced uh, PED user. I disagree with that 100%. This is cross the line with insulin use. Please be careful. Please share this video with anyone. And I hope this helps. Thank you. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy. Yeah.